What's going on? It's Glendon Cameron with another requested video. This one's kind of interesting. If you want to request a video, get some information, go ahead, tap that little square somewhere and ask your question and we'll make it happen. And today's is kind of good and it's kind of crazy. Yo, Glendon, I got an inheritance of $75,000. What's next? My grandmother passed away a few years ago. I just learned she left me $75,000. It was from an insurance policy. I was told it was a clerical error, and that's why I'm just getting the money now. Yeah, that's a little suspect. I want to know what's the best course for me to take. I've always wanted to start a business, but I never had the chance. We have some credit card debt, a house, and two car payments. That's the extent of what we owe. However, we don't have much left over at the end of the month after we pay bills. Question number one. I'm 31 years old, married with kids, a house, and two car payments. Should I pay off the cars? My wife wants to do this. That would use up $40,000, leaving $35K and freeing up $1,000 a month in income. Holy moly. All right, let's talk about these cars. So you've either had two cars with two $500 car payments or one with a $600 car. Okay, you got a lot going on. Um, I'm thinking about this. Okay, first of all, depending upon your cars, depending upon tickets and all this other stuff, your car payments are more than $1,000 a month. You factor in gas and insurance. You may be spending $1,600 to $1,700 a month for these vehicles. Now, you may reference to you wanting to start a business. I do believe paying off the cars is a good deal. However, I got one suggestion because I did two parts on this. Dump one of the cars, trade it, and get a cheaper car and keep the best one. Since you have kids, I figure you've got a van or SUV and you're going to need to keep that. Um, and just get, I mean, when I say get rid of one, I'm talking about go ahead and get you like either a Toyota, a Corolla, something simple, something easy to work on, and essentially a get around car from point A to point B and I'm going to get into why I'm saying this now pay part two of the car questions pay off the cars and make an ironclad agreement the former car money is for your business get this in writing one of the reasons people don't have money is even if the income goes up or more money comes into the house it will find some place to go if you do not make this agreement, and when I say writing, which means you sit down at the kitchen table, not the living room, not in bed, the kitchen table where business is done, and say, hey, babe, okay, you know what? I thought a lot what you said. Let's pay off these cars. However, I want to be really, really clear. You know I want to start this business. So the money from that we no longer have to put in car payments, I want to use that for fun, my business. Okay, okay. And... Now, you may have a problem with that, but that's how I'm looking at it. Those, those are your two options for the cars. I'm kind of leaning toward part one and the combination of part two because you said something else. I always wanted to start a business, but I never had the chance, which means you don't have a lot of big business experience or probably none, which goes to question two. Does it make sense to quit my job, jump to entrepreneurship now while I have the money? I feel this may be my only chance. No, 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 no. Uh, $75,000 in one lump sum is a lot of money. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money. This is not something that I would say with you being who you are at this juncture in your life with no business experience, being married with two kids. This is not the thing that you do. If you had... A business under your belt or you had started the business two or three businesses before it'd be a little bit different because essentially there's going to be so much pressure on you to make this thing a go that you may break up your family just being real um you need to get business skills now what i'm going to do is give you um access to 30 days to 2500 since you asked the question that's something else i do with requested videos i got a lot of bonuses and perks so i'm going to give you that to help you with that because we'll go down and you know i'll talk about that later let's get to question three 
we are also thinking of getting another house, moving up, and this is paying off the car. This and paying off the cars will take all of the money. No, 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 no. Remember what I just said about if there's new money? Because this is what's going to happen. You're going to pay off the cars, right? And since the cars are no longer, you know, showing up on your credit report, you will be able to afford way more house. Go to a mortgage calculator and do this. Take out all your car payments, all your debt, and then see how much house you can buy. It will blow your mind just fact of what one car payment, let alone two, will do to your ratios. You get rid of that stuff. Oh, yeah. The realtor will be showing you all kinds of stuff. No, 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 no. And I'm going to give you some other pointers. What I think you need to do is wait at least 60, maybe preferably 90 days before you spend any of this money. And this is why. So you can get used to the ideal of having money. Also, some other things may come into play. Now, the, the house deal, if you go ahead and get the house, this is my fear for you that you're going to have to continue to work the way you're working or maybe even harder because you get a bigger house your electric bill goes up your carrying costs goes up your insurance goes up all this stuff goes up so i i totally you know i'm just saying just saying that's something you should really be aware of now let's talk about the stuff you didn't ask about with the business i think that you should start a business with little as money invested as possible and this is why you have no experience so if you don't put a lot of money into stuff and as you learn these lessons of building a business you are not freaking out your family because you got a wife and two kids i guarantee you you know if you go hey babe i'm gonna quit my job and take the seventy five thousand to start a business she would freak out she would she would freak out you you may see a different person than the one you're married to so forget about that um and to the folks who are not in this situation if you're like 16 20 something 25 something you don't have any kids you're not married that is the time to start the business i don't care what anyone else tells you about going to college start the business when you have no obligations it will become so hard to do later on in life when you accumulate these obligations. And unfortunately, many people have no clue to what they want to do in life until they're damn near 30 some. I mean, you know, I think it's unfair for people to figure out, hey, at 20 some, you need to know what you're going to do for the rest. That's just untenable to me. So if you got a chance, you got a business idea, if you're in high school, hustle now, start your business now. You know, delay getting married, delay having kids. And I'm not saying being married and having kids, you know, to the guy that asked this question who wants to remain nameless. But do not think that's a bad thing. It's just saying, look at his situation. He's got $75,000, but he has the accumulates of being a family man. And this money could be sucked up just like that. And you go from not having car payments to a nicer house, but he still has that ache in his heart from not being able to start a business. That can be really, really a daunting thing. Now, to starting the business, I don't know what kind of business you want to start because you didn't really reference that. Um, start part time because uh, I do feel, you know, even with paying off the cars, still wait 90 days. Wait, um, you know, and, and investigate. Could you possibly, and this is something else, that you can get rid of both cars, go out and buy two used cars, get better cars for less money? That's also something that's on the uh, table because they're making cars so much better than they did before that, like, I don't know what you have, but I don't, I don't know what $500 a month buys, but you could conceivably say, Trade your cars in, get rid of your cars. I don't know where you are upside down. This may not even be possible. But you're talking about using $40,000 to pay off for two cars. I can tell you, you could spend twenty-five to thirty dollars and have some very nice cars. I'm talking luxury, leather, I mean, you know, butt massager. You can get some nice stuff. 
two of them. I'm talking the SUVs. I'm talking you can if you're willing to go a few years back, you can get some incredibly nice stuff and not even spend 40. So that's something that you should really, 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 really look at because 75 out. And this is why I want you to hold on to the money. Put it in a bank account, put it in a CD, money market or something. Just put it somewhere and really, really think about this. And don't go out and get the new house. Um, you know, if you've got an emergency or something you have to pay off, I can understand using the money for that. But really, really be judicious with this because this is life changing money. And I know I said it's not that much money in the grand scheme of things, but properly used, this could be life changing money. And the car thing, I'm just like 40 grand on two depreciating assets. That's like, bah, really bad. That's just really, really bad in my mind. Because, you know, going back to the used car uh, argument, you could get two cars that are fully, you know, that's taking the big hit of depreciation, go ahead and fully insure them. And if something happens, you're going to get, you're not even going to have to deal with gap insurance. You're going to get the value back. So that's something um, I, I would really, really spend more time on that. Research it. Go to Auto Trader. Look at what's possible for that budget. And I mean, and the thing is, you don't have to. You can do ten thousand for one car. You can do twenty for another. You can do eight thousand for one car. You can do twenty-two. Because essentially, you know, you got the two kids, and there's four people, so you're going to need a bigger vehicle. I get that. But there's a lot of ways you can dice this and get more for your money. Way more. Trust me on this. Now. Uh, on the house, once again, wait, 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 because let's say you go ahead and you, you, you get rid of the cars and you have two cars that are paid off, whether you follow my recommendation of getting two used cars, which give you more car for your money and you have that thousand dollars a month. Okay. There's a lot that you can do with a thousand dollars a month in um, so in, in many different businesses and another thing before you spend any money write down a plan don't talk about it to your wife write it down write it down <laughs> think about it then revise your plan and write it down again and figure out okay what kind of business can I get into if you don't have an idea because once again I don't know and it's like okay because that's a lot of seed money for a business in today's environment so you don't and then you can just put the 35 or, you know, if you follow my recommendation, get the used cars and put 40 grand in the bank and then build, 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 build. So that's my recommendations. That's what I think you should do. No, 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 no. Even when I was in the storage auction business, I taught people out of quitting their job. It's like, hey, I'm going to quit my job and go buy storage auctions full time. I talked so many people out of that. It's just if you never had a business before, if you're not used to unpredictable income, uncertain income, or in some cases, no income, it can be too much too soon. All right. This is Glennon. I'll see you in the next session. If you want to ask me a question, you know, hit the little square. It's around here somewhere and just ask your question and I will. Uh, you'll, you can ask it anonymously, which means you'll only be the one. You'll only be the one to see the video. Most people are going for the private option. For some reason, some I understand, <laughs> some I understand. So if you want to ask me a, a quick, and this is how it works really quick, 25 bucks per question. And I put it on YouTube, $50 per question. And then you get a private console. So that's how it rolls. If you've got any other questions, just email amy at hustlessfood.com. All right. Once again, this is Glennon. I'll see you in the next video.